Hello everybody, my name is Mike Gag. In this video we are going to look at variables in C Sharp. Alright, so I am bringing myself back here into my uh, uh, Visual Studio 2010 main window. Uh, I have a sample project up here. This isn't anything that should be new. Uh, if you watched my previous video, you should be able to get here just fine. Now what I want to do is I want to talk about a couple different types of variables and the way they work in C Sharp. Now, in C-sharp, there are something called built-in primitive uh, variables. Primitives are something that exists in, in a lot of different languages. Uh, and primitives are things like uh, Boolean values, bytes, chars, doubles, floats, ints. All right? um, so they're kind of uh, granule or atomic pieces of data that can't be split down any further. Uh, so a lot of the work that you're going to be doing are with these primitive data types. And let's look at how we create some of them. So right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to work mostly inside of the method or function main. All right, uh, I can create variables in other places, but for now we're just going to work inside here. To create a variable or, or to declare a variable, what you're going to do is you're going to type the keyword for the variable type, and then you're going to give the variable some handle. All right, uh, so let's say I wanted to create a Boolean value. I could say bool is done. All right, and I have created the variable is done that is of type bool. Now you're going to see here it's underlined in green, and if I mouse over that, it's because it's saying, "Hey, is done is declared, but it's never used. I'm never actually using it anywhere." So the the uh, the the IDE is saying, "Hey, by the way, you're you're wasting time here. This isn't doing anything." So we're going to ignore that for now. All right. And what I've done here is I've created a variable. Um, there's a lot that can be said for good variable names. Uh, I'm not going to get into too much of that here. Um, generally speaking, you want your variable names to be descriptive, uh, and you want them to be uh, uh, sensical. You know, you don't want them to be just like some weird string of, of, of numbers and letters. So, uh, so right now, I've created a Boolean value is done. Now, Booleans can hold either true or false. Uh, that's something you should be familiar with. Uh, likewise, uh, if I wanted to create an integer, I could do int x, uh, and let's say I wanted to give it some value, I could write there on the same line, say int x equals equals 5. So now I have this variable x, and x equals 5. Uh, again, x has that, that green line under it saying that uh, I have declared it, but I've never used it. I can also do something like int y equals x, assigning the value of x to y. Uh, and now I no longer have that green line under X because I have used X. All right. Um, now I'm going to read off the list of primitives just so you know. Uh, the primitives in C sharp are bool, byte, char, decimal, double, float, int, long, s byte, short string, u int, u long, and u short. So there's there's quite a few of them. Uh, a lot of people also argue. Um, that uh, things like date, time, and stuff belong in there. Um, I'm of the opinion that date, time is not a primitive. Really, string isn't a primitive either because it's a collection of primitive data. Um, and so while it is built in, it's not exactly primitive data. Okay, uh, so pretty much, you know, we can do all, all sorts of stuff. We can uh, string my string equals hello world. There's a lot of stuff that can be done to uh, initialize and declare variables. A um, couple things I want to point out. This is very uh, C syntax uh, oriented. Uh, this is going to look just like C++, if you're familiar with C++, where everything has that semicolon at the end. Uh, the semicolon is very important. Uh, it lets the, the, the compiler know that you're moving on to the new line. Um, and just the keyword in the beginning. So if you're used to VB or if you're used to JavaScript or um, some other language, this might look a little unfamiliar to you, but it's actually a fairly simple way of handling it. Now, one quick pointer. Um, creating the variable such as this is called declaring the variable. Giving a value like this is called initializing the value. Uh, we can declare and then initialize on two different lines, just like that. Uh, since is done is a boolean value, uh, it'll hold either true or false. Uh, we can also do them on the same line, like you're seeing here. However, if I attempt to initialize before declaring, so let's say um, um, is yellow, bool is yellow, this won't work. 
Uh, the reason being is I can't give it some value and just assume it's going to work. Uh, the, it has to be declared before it's initialized. That's pretty basic stuff there. All right. Now with variables, we can do a type of casting. Uh, for instance, uh, I can do int x equals 5, and uh, then I can do console.writeline x. And then when I run it, you'll see I'm just going to get 5 output. That's all great, good and great. And then I can do double y equal to 3.4. And then I can say console.writeline y. And we can run that and see uh, I have 5 and then 3.4. So, so far, so good. And now I can do y equals 5. I'm sorry. Sorry. y equals x. And then console dot right line y again and we will see that y now equals the 5 that x equals so uh, the the uh, compiler uh, implicitly converted um, an integer into a float I'm sorry a double I'm using double yep an integer into a double so that happened automatically now that's all well and good we took something that was a lower precision and we moved it into something that's a higher precision no problems there what we have to be careful of is if we say something like x equals y because now we're moving something with a higher precision into something with a lower precision and actually if you can see I got a red line here it says cannot implicitly convert from double to int all right it's just not gonna let us do it if I try to run it, I'm going to get an error. Cannot com implicitly convert from double to int. <clears throat> the reason it won't let us do this is because we're going for something, or going with something from a higher precision, 3.4, to something to a lower precision, which is an integer, would just be three. That 0.4 will get truncated off. Integers can't have decimal points. So what we need to do is we need to tell, tell uh, uh, Visual Studio. Uh, we need to say, hey, this is what we want to do, okay? Uh, and so there's a couple ways we can do it. We can simply say convert, oops, dot to int 32, uh, 32 uh, bit integer, or byte integer. Um, I'm sorry, 32 bit integer. Um, and then we have to make sure console.write line, now we're outputting x instead of y. And we'll see, okay, now it works. Uh, so x is equal to 5 at the beginning, y is equal to 3.4, and then x is equal to 3, because we put the 3.4 in, the 0.4 is truncated off. So we can do it this way, or we can do something a little bit simpler, in my opinion, by simply saying int. That means, hey, uh, we want to turn this y into an int, and then put it into x. And I run it, and I can see, hey, that works too. So I can either do convert to int 32, or I can simply say int, just like that. Easy. Okay. So, uh, when working with numbers uh, in C Sharp or in any language, take special care to pay attention to the precision of your numbers to avoid any loss of data, which can cause your programs to give erroneous results. All right, great. Now, that's that's printed data types. All right, uh, the ints, uh, chars, bools, things like that. Now, let's talk about these more complex data types: strings. Um, date times uh, or any classes that you create uh, objects all together all right um, so I can do something on uh, creating a complex data type is exactly the same uh, string my string like I showed you before a string is a complex data type uh, I can say hello okay uh, I can do I can do date time my time equals Oops, date time dot now. That'll store this, the exact, uh, I believe it's down to the millisecond of when this program's run. Um, so complex data types, really no different in how we declare and initialize them. All right. Now, there is one big difference behind the scenes, uh, and that is value versus reference. Okay. Uh, so if I say something like int x equals 5, that is a valued type. What that means is we are storing the value of 5, and this memory is allocated on the stack. All right, if you don't know what the stack is, it's not a big deal. This is just a little bit of a behind-the-scenes look. Now, when I create a more complex data type, like string, all right, 
This is a reference data type. And what that means is a, a reference to a memory address is all that's being stored. And that memory address is on the heap. All right. Uh, it's dynamically allocated. OK, so that's just a little behind the scenes. It's kind of important to know a little later on, especially if you're dealing with uh, specific memory issues uh, in a more complex project. So for now, uh, just sort of store that one away. Uh, your primitives are value data types. Uh, your objects are reference data types. If you come from a C++ background, you may remember pass by value and pass by reference. All right, those are things you don't need to do anymore um, in C Sharp. I know that's going to come back. That thing is going to come back to bite me. I'm sure you probably can, and I'm sure there's reasons you'd want to. However, you don't need to most of the time because your bigger objects, like your classes and things like that, are automatically by reference. So you don't need to specifically pass them by reference. It just automatically happens. All right. Now, one last thing I want to talk about to wrap this video up is something about the way C# -sharp handles uh, uh, data types. In that, C# -sharp has a unified typing system. Uh, basically what that means is that all types, primitive and non-primitive, can be treated as objects. So even though X uh, is a primitive data type, technically it comes as a class object, just a special type of one. That's why I can say something like uh, int X equals 5, and then I can do X dot, and X has functions, like X dot to string. All right. In C++, primitive data types did not have methods available to it. All right. But in C Sharp, everything is an object. Even primitive data types are technically objects, and they have some things to use. Um, so just want to point that out, too, that everything you can do like a two-string on, uh, and uh, well, here, I'll show you that list again. Uh, two-string compares, equals, we can get hash codes, things like that. All right, um, so everything has those uh, because, again, uh, C Sharp uses a unified type system. Uh, in this case, it's called the common type system, or CTS, and it's what makes this available to us. All right, so that's going to wrap up my video on variables. Um, if you're not sure exactly how variables work or what variables are, uh, it's best to kind of backtrack and look at some more uh, beginner programming materials. Um, it's important for you to understand how variables work from this moment on. Uh, and hopefully this just sort of showed you how variables work in C Sharp. It's really not all that much different from C or C++ or Java or pretty much anything else. Um, it's fairly straightforward and simplistic.